Good evening and welcome to uh, another edition of Money Talk with Melanie. I am your business diva, Melanie Collette, and uh, happy to coming, happy to be coming to you live uh, via SHR Media and High Plains Fun Talk Radio here in uh, lovely Cape May, New Jersey. Uh, I, I have a very special guest. Uh, with me today, and I, and listen, I, I call some guests like you know I'm excited to have this guest, or whatever. But usually, if you if you hear me use very special guests, is because they are they are an open and out of the closet Christian. So <laughs> so I um, am, am very excited to uh, to have with me this evening Marnie Sweetberg. Did I pronounce your name right? I forgot to ask while we were chatting. Is Marnie? Yes, Sweetberg. Uh, uh, Swiberg. Okay, see, I'm glad I asked. Um, so happy to have her um, with us this evening. She's uh, an international leadership uh, mentor and Christian speaker, which I'm sure she'll tell us uh, much more about. Uh, before we get to that, hi, Doug, David, Roberto, Chris. You better, you guys better get your like wives and daughters in on this, because <laughs> she's going to be dropping some serious. Uh, knowledge on you on today's topic, which is how uh, women reach their God-given goals. And uh, I think it's just a, a huge, hugely important topic. And I know I am well aware, uh, and, and anybody, and I'm sure my bosses are like, really what, like you, you realize your demo for women is like 0.001%, <laughs> but that's okay. Uh, I'm, I, one of the reasons I, I'm, I'm having Marnie on is because I, I was hoping um, to change that because I think it's, I think, you know, women are kind of important. We, we have the babies and whatnot. So, uh, <laughs> so just to say kind of an important topic. So I'm very excited. A little bit of housekeeping before housekeeping, before I introduce, um, my guest, if you'd like to, uh, follow me on Facebook and know who my guests are ahead of time or Twitter, uh, the handle is at money talk Mel or uh, at Money Talk with Melanie on Facebook. If you are interested in being a guest on a show or have a guest suggestion, don't hesitate to email me at moneytalkwithmelanie at gmail.com. Outside of that, if you're a Pinterest fan or Google Plus fan or uh, any of that, I, I am also there. I'm, I'm everywhere. <laughs> you, can also, you can also find me in any of those places. So I wanted to make sure you guys were aware of that. I want to give a, sh a shout out to my sponsors, the Tax Mama, Ms., the one and only Ms. Eva Rosenberg. And since uh, the, both of those tax bills have passed, the one in the Senate and in the House, and now they're in conference, probably a good time to have her back on and get her expertise. Uh, so go to, her, go to her website, taxmama.com. Also want to thank um, the one and only David Barnett of businessfireadvantage.com. Please do, if you are even thinking about considering uh, buying a franchise, he, he is your man. He's got uh, hundreds of free videos and uh, uh, instructional videos, and he's also got a couple of really fantastic books to help you in that regard. He is the guy that you want to contact, so check out businessbuyeradvantage.com. Now, without further ado, uh, Marty, oh, she just told me, uh, t tell me one more time. Marty, tell me your last Swedberg. name. Yes, Marty Swedberg. Okay, I want to make sure I say that correctly. Uh, she's a leadership mentor, like I mentioned. She's also been the author of 13 books. She hosts her own radio show in her own right. And she is a media sweetheart, which I could totally tell when I researched her. Um, she's a keynote speaker for organizations around the world. And she has a couple of great uh, uh, websites, too, to tell us about. Uh, also, uh, she's fun and fast paced, but she's pe peaceful and approachable. Uh, and her history includes fires, floods, a tornado, car wrecks, business setbacks, a burglary, lightning strike. You're very special if you get a lightning strike in your life, I'm just saying. Uh, <laughs> ambulance rides and more. She models comeback behavior, uh, possibility thinking, and profound faith, which uh, I'm very, I'm always very excited to. Uh, introduce someone whose faith is a very important part of their business success. 
as uh, as the web hostess of www.womenspeakers.com, the largest online directory of Christian women speakers in the world. She connects event planners with speakers from every experience level, fee range, and denomination. She's also a public speaker in her own right, as well as a media personality. She's uh, actually hosts a number one ranked and featured blog talk radio show. So we, we are very excited to have her. Uh, is there anything that I left out that you might want to add? Well, I just want to say that the guys are welcome too. Often, <laughs> <laughs> I'll be a, a, a leader conference along with the women's proposition. So, guys, people go and do it at your girl show. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I agree with you 100% on that. Bring, bring the girls along for sure. So, I, I'm, I'm very excited to have you here uh, this evening to, to talk about um, how it is that women can reach their God-given goals. And so where, where would you like to start with that? Because it, it, it's a broad topic, but it's an important one. So why? When I work with groups around the world, the things that are consistent are that we are made uniquely in Christ. And each one of you who is listening to me, when God strung together your three billion base pair of DNA, he did it in a particular way. And so as soon as you recognize that you are unique and that God is actually orchestrating uh, your life, then, then you'll be able to go ahead and really get on track with what he's created you to do. It's like the difference between a, a jet plane trying to be a bicycle and a bicycle trying to be a jet plane. Um, neither will be content or satisfied ever until they recognize what the designer created them to be. So that's always the first place you start. I like that. that, that that's an excellent point. And with, with the climate of the world today, it, it's almost like it works against that theory, if you will. Like the world works against it. Actually, a friend of mine um, posted on Facebook earlier today that he opened a woman a door for uh, an older woman. And she was like, thank you, young man. And uh, then he, he, the same day, opened the door for a younger woman. And she was like, I got it. Like, that was <laughs> like, no, like, no, thank you. I got it. And to me, that is just kind of like a perfect illustration of, of kind of the climate that we live in when it comes to acknowledging womanhood, if you will. Right. Or even guys struggle with this, too, because the reality is that we are all being pushed into a mold. And you're, yeah, it's a different mold, depending on what neighborhood you're in or what group you run with or what continent you're on or whatever. The molds look different, but it's always a mold. There's an okay and allowable uh, you, and then there's the you that makes people uncomfortable. The you that even makes you uncomfortable because it's stepping outside of your comfort zone. Uh, but that's usually where God wants us to be, in that position of dependence on him. So I would say it like this, Melanie, that in the world, you can accomplish great good. And uh, maybe you go out and you feed the poor, or, you know, you get to sell everything you own, and you give it, give it away, uh, and you're accomplishing great good in the moment. But there is this opportunity that we have to let God live through our life. In which case, not only are we doing good in the moment, but we're good, doing good for eternity. That's a whole different level of living. I do a program called the Five Levels of Personal Power. And the fifth level, very few people really spend very much time in because it requires us to actually allow God to flow his life through us. And that we are not used to. That's not normal. That's not the default. The default is to do it ourselves. You know, we learned that when we were about to know me, do it my way. <laughs> right. Right. That's very true. Now, what what does that look like? Because there's many, you know, sometimes it looks like, uh, uh, or it feels like it, it means do nothing and just kind of let, let, let the tie flow. How, how do we know if we're letting God run it or if we're running it? How do you know the difference? Well, you know, I, I teach a principle called the air of prayer. And this, you know, there's a verse in the Bible that says pray without ceasing or pray at all times. And that used to bug me so much, Melanie, because it's like, how are you supposed to do that? I mean, you've got work to do. Right. You pray all the time. It doesn't seem possible. Right. And it really kind of ticked me off that, that God would require that or ask that of us when it seemed so impossible. And then at one point, he showed me the analogy. 
technology that changed it for me, and this might help others listening to to understand what it is. So if you think about your breath, so take a deep breath in. Everybody take a deep breath in with me. Okay, let that out. Now take another deep breath in. And let that out. So these are conscious, chosen breaths. But all day long and all day yesterday and the whole night when you were sleeping, you were breathing without thinking. Your body was just taking care of it for you because that's how God built you. So we have this natural response called a, a breath. It's just this beautiful thing that God created. A dolphin is a water dweller, but an air breather. A dolphin also breathes, but it doesn't breathe like we do. It breathes about every five minutes or so. So it lives under the water. It does all of its work down under the water. And then every five minutes or so, it comes up for a breath of air. And that's how a dolphin breathes. So we, Melanie, as humans, we are earth dwellers. But when God created us, he created us to be prayer breathers. So that we need to go up for prayer every little bit in order to not feel ourselves suffocating, um, drowning. Wow. And so we, we, can, we can begin to feel ourselves drowning when the cares of life start coming in and we aren't running them to Jesus. So basically how it looks, to, to be living in Christ is that any time that you have an emotional peak or valley, you're running that thought to Christ. So you've just gotten a big promotion, and right away you're going to be tempted to pride, to arrogance, to try to do it all yourself, whatever. You run that thought to Jesus. Or maybe you've just received really sad news. You run that thought to Jesus. And as we go up for air through prayer, we are able to maintain a very – Steady, a steady emotional life here on earth despite all of the trauma and drama that's going on around us. And that's really our trigger. The trigger is the emotional peaks and valleys. That's the trigger for prayer. And if there's no trigger, just go ahead. You don't have to worry about it. Like, I, I, I want to, uh, now I understand the question because I once had to sit in front of my closet and I thought, am I supposed to really say, you know, what should I wear today? <laughs> right. <laughs> like that. Right. You know, that detail. And God's response to me was, if you're agitated by making this choice, yes. If you're peaceful and calm, just choose something. And it made perfect sense to me. And does that make sense to you? It certainly does. And I, and I think anybody, anybody who's, especially anybody who's been doing this Christian thing for like a minute, I think, <laughs> I think you know, I, I think... I, I am sure that I'm not the only one, which is part of the reason why I wanted to have you on because I knew that you would be able to really marry these two concepts in, in a way that I think is, is relatable to Christians. And I, and I just don't feel like it's talked about enough. Like I, like I, um, I was telling you uh, in our little pre-chat, you know, and I was like, yeah, go, go for it. Like how, however much Jesus and God you want to put in there, that, that is, was kind of my point in having you on. So yeah, and I, you know, I think I think that a lot of times um, God is divorced from our business life. That we think, you know, there's my God side of me and there's the business side of me. But if I could just use the analogy of a whiteboard, so let's just stick a whiteboard up in front of our face right now, and let's draw draw a line right across the across the middle of the whiteboard. And up on the top half, write God stuff. And the bottom half right my stuff. Right. Okay, so how this how this used to look for me is God's stuff was stuff that I really couldn't do much about, like um, world hunger, uh, the big US economy, um, maybe heaven, you know, what happens to me after I die. You know, these are the kinds of things I just have to trust God, you know, maybe I can help a little, but you know, not really very much. And then everything else is on my side of the the roster. You know, I've got everything else that I have to do today to make the world keep spinning for me. And so God really convicted me that, no, 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 he wanted everything on, on his side of the roster, every last thing. And then if I do something today, I get to do it for God. I mean, it's like, it's like I'm helping him with his thing. And, and women can understand this difference because it's the difference between me saying to my husband, Dave, would you help me by carrying that basket of laundry upstairs? Instead of me saying to Dave, I'm kind of overwhelmed here, and I'm wondering if you could just take over the laundry thing. You know, would you just mind taking it over? Because, you know, it's just too much for me. There's a huge difference between those two perspectives. 
One is delegating the whole project. The other one is asking for a moment's help. And and God really built us to have him taking care of everything and us assisting him, not the other way around. Okay, wow. Okay, I'm just absorbing. <laughs> Yeah, and it's not like and, he needs our help. It's not like he needs our help. So and and when I, I, when I when somebody's name comes to prayer, to my mind for prayer, let's say, all of a sudden I'm thinking about Sue. I'm just thinking about Sue, and I'm like, why am I thinking about Sue? Well, maybe I should be praying for Sue. I'm a little busy right now. Okay, so I don't. Well, Sue needed prayer right then, and so God just goes taps another person, taps another heart. He brings Sue to their mind, and he's going to get his work done. He doesn't need us at all. That is, at my, my, you know, go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, I like the story. Uh, I tell a story in my book, uh, Feeling Loved, about a little Johnny. It's a Saturday morning, and little four-year-old Johnny gets woken up by Dad, and Daddy says, I want to come out and help me build the shed today. And little Johnny's like, sure, jumps out of bed and puts on his little toy tool belt, and him and Dad head outside, and he, all day long, he's more trouble than he's worth, and He's knocking over the bucket of nails, and, you know, he's in the way, and he's just, you know, taking more time than if Dad had done it by himself, he would have been done it half the time. But, you know, Dad really just wanted to hang out with Johnny. So at the end of the day, they get the shed built, and Daddy steps back, and he says, come here. And they stand, and they look at the shed, and can you picture this right now? And Dad's got his arms crossed across his chest, and little Johnny's got his arms crossed across his chest, and Daddy looks down at Johnny and says, couldn't have done it without you. And little Johnny beams back at his dad because he knows it's true. And then that says, so oh, as a reward, let's go out for an ice cream cone. You know, Noni, that's actually how it is with us and God. He really doesn't need us at all. All that he's trying to do is build a relationship with us. And we can either take it or we can leave it. We can try to do it with him or we can just do it all without him. But I'm just telling you that if you do it with him, there's a reward at the end and there's all the joy in the relationship along the way. Indeed, I just wanted to <laughs> just want to give a shout out to my girlfriend Celeste, one of, one of my BFFs, uh, Celeste Clavery, who's uh, on the in, on the Facebook chat, and she said yes, yes, Marnie, Amen. Thank you for stating so. Uh, and uh -huh. I, I, <laughs> yeah, one of one of my sisters. Um, so, and I, I'm so glad that she got to uh, to get on in this call because I knew it was something that she would totally appreciate. And so. Uh, from a business perspective, I mean, you, you, when you think of women in, in business, right, you usually think of, I mean, the first, the, the stereotype, right, is like some, some godless woman who doesn't submit to anyone, let alone God, right? And, and, and is, is it possible to be a successful businesswoman and also be in submission to God at the same time? Is that possible? I think so. It's not It's not necessarily possible in every organization. Um, I, I don't think it's possible in every organization. I'm going to bring to mind, though, um, someone from the Bible, and it, it's not a woman, but it could be anyone. Um, Daniel, he was taken as a captive from Israel over to Babylon, mm -hmm. and he bubbled, he bubbled to the surface as a leader right away. He just, he just asked for special privileges. And he got him, and it worked out well. And he bubbled to the top. And so in the end, he actually ended up serving second in command to the king there. Right. And um, this was, if you think about it, he, he was actually bringing prosperity and success to the enemy. That's actually what he was doing. This is the country that killed his parents, that separated him from his temple and from his God, you know, like being able to be there at church every Sunday. And yet he was able to follow God to the degree that he was able to serve and actually make that country more prosperous than if he hadn't have been there. So I'm thinking that, yeah, that, that definitely even, even in a corporate setting where you feel like, wow, I don't even know what I'm doing here. Absolutely. God can totally use you and God can, and, and, and I know he has women and men positioned all around this country and all around the world in multiple different positions that some we would be shocked that they would be a Christian and doing that job. But I mean, I think all of Daniel's contemporaries would have been shocked that he would have been helping the enemy succeed.
Indeed. And you know, when I was thinking about what you were saying about how, you know, uh, you might think you might have somebody in mind and wonder like, why am I thinking about that person is maybe because they need a prayer. And, um, it reminded me, I here recently have been listening to the sermon about Esther, about the, the book, the story of Esther. And basically like the same thing happened. You know, she was told like, you need to handle this, but if you don't, God will just find somebody else to do it. <laughs> Obviously I'm oversimplifying the story, but basically that's how it went down. So, well, I think, you know, I think that, I think that it's really important for us to recognize here that, you know, all throughout scripture, God says that he loves the humble and he opposes the proud. So what does it look like to be humble? Basically humble just means that I need God. Humble means I recognize God exists and that I need him, <laughs> you know? Right. So that's what the first, that's the difference in business, in daily life, in relationships, with money, with anything. Either I'm I'm working on the premise that I can do it without God, or I'm working on the premise that I need God. You know, those are the two. Those are the two positions. That is that is very true. And so you could have, um, in essence, a, a woman who is highly successful, educated, all of those things, and still be a God fearing woman. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Because I think there's a an I think there's a narrative out there. There's like a stereotype, if you will, that says you know if you are you know if you're educated, if you're successful, you know that you somehow are like less of a Christian, particularly for women. Well, I mean the stereotype kind of both goes both ways from my perspective because some some people who are who are in high positions that are wealthy look down on people who aren't. And so you can't really have very much faith in God if you don't have much money, because God, you know, God's got all the money in the world. So how can you have faith if you don't have money? So I think there's stereotypes left and right, and and I think we just have to do what we do with stereotypes to say, is that true? <laughs> you know, is that really true? Right. And, and the the bottom line is, God can position, God has and does still position people in all kinds of places, and He uses people to do all kinds of things that I think when we get to heaven, we are our jobs are going to drop in for. And we're just going to be like, you are kidding me. You're <laughs> kidding me. But if you just read through the Bible one time. And, you know, and I've often wondered about this, a little off topic, but I have often wondered, you know, when when uh, Hollywood makes a movie of the Bible, it's kind of weird. They try to, like, put four stories together or something. If any of those stories, if they would just tell them the way it was, right. they're so profound, so riveting, and so, like, otherworldly that you know it just takes your breath away to just read them actually read them and imagine living through that story i mean it's riveting and yet you know we always feel like we have to help god make it you know look better or be better or i could or something I, don't know. I could not agree with you more like you know there's so many stories in the bible that's like yeah that's pretty amazing just all by itself you did not have to take artistic license <laughs> 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 That is a pretty good story, though. Yeah, for real. Like, you really didn't need any extra on it. Uh, I have a question in the chat room. My friend Celeste says, uh, if we're stuck in our understanding of what the Lord wants for us, how can we get unstuck, if you will, from that position? What should our focus be? Beautiful. Love it. So if we think of God as light, um, you know, and if you start right back in Genesis, you know, the first thing that God created was he created light. He, he separated the darkness from the light. And it wasn't day and night. This was before day and night. So there was something there that, you know, was separated light from darkness. Okay, and that has to happen in our spirits as well. So anytime that I'm confused, I'm just looking around and mostly, you know, mostly I'm living in the light. I'm living with God, shining his light on everything. And uh, imagine yourself walking to in a pitch black room right now. You walk into the pitch black room, you reach over the wall switch, which you know where it is, and you flip it on, and all of a sudden, all that darkness is gone. The darkness is all gone just because the light came. So what we want to do is when we're stuck, when we're confused about anything, we just want to say, where's the dark? Where's the dark? And maybe you're in a room and the light's on and everything's looking good. <laughs> you know, there's a, there's a couch over there, and it's dark under the couch. And you know what's under the couch because you shoved it there earlier today. <laughs> so whatever. <laughs> right. Yeah, you know? So when, when we ask God to show us where it's dark, he's going to. He's actually going to show us why we're stuck. And only he can really explain this. Um, so sometimes we're stuck. Let's 
thing to run a rock. And we're stuck. And so sometimes we're stuck because this roadblock is in front of us because we have to pause. Because if we went ahead right now, it'd be too soon. We, we aren't supposed to go yet. Sometimes this roadblock is in front of us because it means stop. Turn around and go back the other way. Or turn right or turn left. Sometimes that roadblock is in front of us just to test our tenacity. Just to test and see if we are really committed to this thing. God wants to see, are you going to go over, under, around, or how are you going to get through this? Because I put this here to test your faith. So the only way we can even know what kind of a step we are is if we ask God to display, you know, shine his light on it. So what I just always do is I just honestly, and, you know, you can't really fake God out, and he is not easily fake God out. Right. So I think just honestly, if you really want to know why you're stuck, just ask God, you know, where, why am I stuck? You know, where's the darkness here? And just yield that darkness up to him. And as soon as, actually, as soon as he shows the light on it, typically that's the end of it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Um, it's just like darkness in a room. It has to go away. True. Like a true. Light true. Very true. So now, as far it, it, now, I put it um, exactly the way I saw it on, on one of your articles or something. Um, our topic for today: uh, help women reach their God-given goals. And I put it that way because um, I know that it makes an assumption um, that our goals are God-given, and, and I was hoping that 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 people would. That that would get people's attention, um, <laughs> because it, it's. I think that there are some people, secular people, that those religion has nothing to do with your professional life. Religion has nothing to do with your politics, people. <laughs> and and, and, and I, I think there probably would be some secular uh, objection to that. So. Well, well, definitely we have to we have to agree that every goal is not God given. Right. There are there are goals that are really inspired by Satan. Really, they're they're terrible. I mean, think of Hitler. Right. Um. Every goal is not God given. So, and that's why I say it that way because I'm really not helping women achieve every last goal that comes to their thought. I'm not. I'm not interested in that. I'm really interested in helping women achieve their God given goals. So the first thing is to identify what those are. Compare, and it's back to the beginning of this conversation, actually, it's kind of interesting how we came all full circle here. So <laughs> it's back to the conversation that we had at the beginning about you are unique, and God actually built you. I mean, just hold up your thumb right now. Just look at that thumb. Look at the, look at the thumbprint right there. It's less than an inch of space square, and yet, if you were taken into a court of law, they could condemn you convict you of being a certain place at a certain time just by your thumbprint. That's how unique you are in all of the whole world. You're, yours is unique from everybody else's. Your whole makeup is that unique. You are that unique. And as long as you're fighting and trying to do what you know what you thought somebody else told you to do or you know what your parents wanted you to do or what you thought looked fun or what you thought looked amazing as this other person did it and you're not really clear about what God created you to do, uh, you're really not you're really not pursuing God given goals. You're just still just kind of floundering. And so my heart is to help women pursue their God given goals. And if you're listening and you haven't even done any work on this at all, you just, you're like, Oh my goodness, I know I'm off track. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Just start by reading the book The Past by Lori Beth Jones. It's a, it's just a fantastic place to start. And then if I can be of any assistance to you just go to Marty dot com. But um but honestly What's the name the, of the book the again? Thing, what, the most it? important thing is for us to figure out who we are in Christ. True. Now, does that require, uh, in order to do this, and, and this is actually another, I'm kind of maybe rephrasing another one of Celeste's questions. Um, sure. it, like, if, do we need, to, we need to shut out the world, our intellect, our, what's going on in our minds to hear the Holy Spirit speaking this to us? Like, how, how do we determine that? Because some... So there are some, you're right, there are some goals, and this applies to, to men too, and I'm glad to see so many men uh, here in the chat. I know I have a lot, I have a ton of men, male listeners, um, because this applies to you as well. Um, how, how would you, but I think women, we probably have a lot more difficult time doing it because emotions, hormones, and all that stuff <laughs> that we have to contend with. So how, how do you do that um, to make sure that you're hearing from God through Holy Spirit rather than hearing your own internal leanings. Yeah. 
Well, I think it kind of depends depends where you're at, but maybe I can use this analogy. Um, when we would go on vacation when the children were young and I was homeschooling and doing a lot of other stuff then, and my husband was working corporate uh, management at that point, and um, we would go on a vacation, and it would typically take about five to six days before he could hear the sounds that were around us in the woods because the buzz of the busyness was so loud. And I know some of you who are listening can really understand. It takes a little while to come off of that buzz and to just hear even what's around you in nature. So if you've been typically doing this without God in the center of it, it's going to take a little while for you to actually be able to hear them. You're going to have to actually make some dedicated effort to do it. And that's why I encourage you. The path is such a great book to start with because she's going to take you, or that is going to take you through some really specific exercises that get you started, being able to see things from God's perspective, hear this, and begin to work on that. And mostly in my in my last book, which is called Flow Through Vessel, I talk about, you know, since we were two years old, we've been doing it ourselves. Um, you know, we started young, being very independent. Me do it. I do it myself. No. Mm-hmm. My way. <laughs> right. And, you know, all we did as we grew up, we really didn't let any of that go. We just submerged it so we didn't get in trouble. But we were really still always doing it our way. So when we start this walk with God, if you're new to this relationship with God, it is really pretty mind-bending. Because where a parent's goal is to help a child grow from babyhood, where you're totally dependent, all the way to totally independent as an adult, God's plan for us is the exact reverse. That as we start as a baby, totally independent and unaware of him, that we come to know him and grow into total dependence on him. And that, I mean, if you look at what I've done with my life, it doesn't mean shelving your brain or your intellect. It doesn't mean dying to yourself. What it, I mean, it, it is dying to yourself a little bit. What it really means is coming fully alive to the you that God created you to be. And that's the best possible you. Because he was, he's the architect that strung together the three billion base pair of DNA. When he was stringing you together, he knew exactly what you were created and designed to do in this world. And to try to be content doing anything other than that is really just bashing your head against the wall. It's really not ever going to produce the kind of contentment and satisfaction that we have when we're truly walking in what God created us to be. Very true. Very true. Excellent. Well, I know I promised that I've already kept you over 30 minutes. 30 minutes. <laughs> I apologize for that. Um, but before I let okay. you go, please uh, tell my audience about um, your speaker website, about how they can hire you if they want you. I know there's a couple of, of show hosts that are on if they'd like you on, on their show. Um, how, how can they reach out to you? Absolutely. Well, the easiest place to find everything is just marnie.com, M-A-R-N-I-E.com. And we have links to everything there. And if you happen to be a Christian woman speaker who's listening, and uh, would like to um, get, get your name out to more churches and organizations who bring in Christians. That's womenspeakers.com. And if you do see guests um, for your events or whatever, check out womenspeakers.com as well. As well. And uh, wow, Melanie, what a delight to be here with you and your audience today. It's been so much fun, and you're a great host. It was just fun. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. And I will be registering very shortly, actually, finishing my registration. For Christian Women oh, Speakers dot I will. I have to fit. I have stuff to finish uh, on there, but but I'm going to finish registering very very soon. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. Yeah, and I I posted both of those sites in, in, in the chat, and I'll be sure to make sure that uh, when I post the podcast, I put all that information in there. Yeah, and I think too. I usually don't. I usually don't mention this on shows, but just today, it seems like. It seems like some of you that are listening are like just confused about or just not sure about a particular thing. I do just offer a program of coaching with like 15 minutes at time or whatever. You don't have to sign up for a big, you know, huge year or something. Um, I just try to fit some coaching in as my week allows. So if you ever just have a quick question, you want to run by me or whatever, there's coaching available at marnie.com as well. 
And that's beautiful. And that is particularly, listen, knowing that you are a Christian and those of us who, who's, you know, you're trying to live a God-centered life and to find just a regular business uh, coach doesn't always cut it, frankly, because they, you know, they don't always understand right. that God-centered part. Right, right. And, and my heart, my heart is to help you to expand into your soul, into the fullness of who God created you to be. Not just live a little part of it or a little corner of it, but, you know, let, let's see what God created you to be and let's get you there as quickly as we can. I love it. Thank you so much for staying overtime for me too. I really, really just uh, sincerely appreciate it because I know, I know you guys time is like really tight. So I, I appreciate it very much. And I hope, I do hope that you'll come back. Oh, thank you. It's such a delight to be here. Thank you guys. Have a wonderful evening. Yep. You too. You are okay. listening. In, in, indeed you're listening to money talk with melanie i am your business diva melanie collette that was the one and only marnie swedberg i hope i'm pronouncing her name correctly i'm so I'm just really bad at that <laughs> but she was fantastic uh so please do check out uh both of her websites marnie.com if you're listening via shr media and high plains fund and talk radio it's m-a-r-n-i-e uh dot com or women's speakers Dot com. After the break, when we come back, we're going to talk some money talk news, lots of stuff going on in the news. I just started investing in Bitcoin. I wanted to make sure I let you guys know about that. And I have some, I have some Bitcoin news on the other side of the break. I of course also have some news um, from Congress, some Google YouTube news and all kinds of other stuff coming up. So uh, we'll be back in a few minutes right after the break. Not all the king's horsemen, leftists, or convicts now preparing to vote will prevent the election of Mr. Judge Roy Moore to the U.S. Senate. Hello, I'm Ron Edwards. On today's page from the Edwards Notebook, it is no secret that the Republican Rhino Brigade, led by the likes of Mitch McConnell, Paul Ryan, and many others, do not like the people who have the policy and stated Christian beliefs of Mr. Moore, who wants our government to operate within the restraints of the U.S. Constitution. Deputy Group Along McConnell and his rhino cohorts sat around like immobile bootleggers when Obama was carrying out his mission to weaken the republic beyond repair. Even before Moore's foray into the race for the Senate, the Republican elites never held a supporter of the Ten Commandments and our Constitution in very high regard. There is literally a major battle going on for the heart, soul, and direction our nation is to embark upon going forward. So, the accusations of bad behavior against Moore are lacking complete credibility. If it turns out he's guilty, I'll be the first to demand that he go the way of John Conyers, back to where he came from. But for the leftists, who now allow convicted felons to vote in Alabama to help their agenda, he is awful. And I thank God their effort shall fail miserably. I'm Ron Edwards. Sponsored by the Tri-County Liberty Coalition. Who likes paying taxes? Nobody. That's why Eva Rosenberg from TaxMama.com wants you to pay less of them. Read Small Business Taxes Made Easy and learn how legally hiring your spouse and children can slash your taxes. Learn how to set up a business plan that minimizes taxes, the benefits of setting up an exit plan, how to avoid getting audited, and how to legally increase your deductible expenses with better record-keeping techniques. Don't let the IRS squeeze you out of every penny. Visit TaxMama.com. Click on Ask a Tax Question to get free answers to your tax and business questions. That's TaxMama.com. My name is David Barnett, and I've been helping people buy and sell small and medium-sized businesses since 2008. So far this year, I've gone on five vacations. It's because I've got my own business. When you get tired of being managed by someone else and you decide that business ownership is right for you, without the risk of starting your own unproven enterprise, then come over to businessbuyeradvantage.com. There are over 100 YouTube videos on buying and selling businesses that you can watch for free. That's businessbuyeradvantage.com. Welcome to this week's Money Talk Minute with your business diva, Melanie Collette. This week's Money Talk Minute talks about how to improve your financial life by reading blogs. There are three blogs that I'd like you to check out to improve your financial life. 
One is called Money Under 30. Money Under 30 can be a little misleading by the title because the information is really good for people of all ages. It talks about stuff like how to buy a car, budgeting tips, how to get a loan, and anything in between when it comes to personal finance. Another blog that I'd like you to check out is called Get Rich Slowly. Now, Get Rich Slowly focuses on how to build your wealth over time. The layout is really simplistic, and they really place a premium on high-quality content in all things related to personal finance. Finally, I'd look, like you couples to check out Frugal Woods. Frugal Woods documents a young couple's path to financial freedom and wealth through a frugal lifestyle. Now, they're living on a multi-acre plot of land in rural Vermont. The pictures are gorgeous, and there are personal stories that will teach you how to manage your personal finance. That is this week's Money Talk Minute. I'm your business diva, Melanie Collette. Please be sure to check out Money Talk with Melanie, Monday through Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and 2 p.m. on the West Coast here on SHR Media and High Plains Pundit Talk Radio. Remember, this is important because, after all, it is your money. From the warfront to the streets of our nation's capital, men of faith, Dr. Michael Jones, the underground professor, and Kenneth McClinton, the exceptional conservative, bring both constitutional gravitas and spiritual perspective on today's issues to the most influential Christian urban talk show, 9.05 p.m. Eastern, Thursdays. It's a new day on New Day, Black and Red. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. You're listening to Money Talk with Melanie. I am your business diva, Melanie Collette, and we just had such a fantastic guest who snuck into the chat on Facey. So if you guys are, if you're listening on SHR Media or High Plains Pundit, if you uh, go to my Facebook page, actually my personal page, that's where the most people hang out. Uh, it's also uh, streaming on the show page at Money Talk Mel. Uh, you can certainly join us in the chat. And I, like I said, I saw that uh, our guests joined the chat. I guess to check things out, which is perfectly fine. Welcome so much for you being here. Um, now I want to talk about a little bit about what's going on in the news. Usually I do it the other way around, but I just switched the, uh, um, the format up just a little bit. The first thing I want to talk about is um, something that's going on between apparently Google and YouTube are having like some serious issues, which I, I cannot have. I, I don't know about you guys, but like I personally can't have can't have Google and YouTube fighting. Like that's that's not cool. But apparently, uh, Google and YouTube have some some serious beef, and Google is uh, going to pull YouTube from Amazon hardware. And Amazon's you know responses, you know that Google is setting a disappointing precedent. Uh, by selectively blocking customer access to an open website. Uh, that's according to a report by The Verge. And I'm going to tell you, um, you know, I, I've said this about Google before. I, you know, I'm a huge Google fan because of the efficiency of their apps. And if my, my boy, uh, the Unpleasant Blind Guy, is listening, I don't, I don't think he's in the chat, but he, he probably will listen. Um, he's no fan of Google either just because the, the privacy issues are, are huge. But I'm addicted and I can't I can't get off of it. So I can't I can't have Google and YouTube fighting. Like this is not and from a financial perspective, not for nothing. It's not it's not good for any any of us. Um, and Google literally removed uh, YouTube from all the fire uh, products. There's a fire fire and echo products, which are the Amazon products. And any of you guys who own um, a home assistant. Uh, Echo Assistant, or or some people refer to it as an Alexa. <laughs> if you own one of those, then then that that'll be relevant to you. So that's something you want to keep your eye on. Now, Bitcoin. I just started investing in bitcoins, like literally yesterday. So I don't have anything to report just yet. But uh, as far as my personal account, and before I recommend a particular company. After doing some research, I picked this particular company, but before I recommend them to you, um, I, I want to make sure that I check it out for myself and see how it goes. So I'm probably going to be in for about a month before I reveal what the company is and, and how it's actually doing and, and that kind of thing. But that said, uh, Bitcoin cracked uh, $12,000 uh, today, according to Coindesk. 
now uh, the cryptocurrency, the exact number is $12,198.57 as of this morning. Um, it, 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 it's exploding. Now, there are people who will tell you that, you know, because there's no government regulations, that that's a bad thing. But I will, I will tell you that because there's no government regulations, that's a good thing, <laughs> in, in, in my estimation. But there, there is that, and I think I mentioned this in, in last week's show, there is a, um, there, there's some scuttlebutt out there that the government's, you know, watching it closely to, to, uh, to, to see if they need to get involved. My answer is no, you do not need to get involved. You need to leave it alone. Because getting involved in, um, in our currency is what has it kind of, you know, doing what it does now. Like now it's not backed by gold. It's not backed by anything. You know, you can't really, you can't really argue as somebody who's into um, our currency, right? Who's into cash that, you know, one of the issues with Bitcoin is there's no backing. Well, no kidding. Ours doesn't have any backing either. <laughs> not, not really. I mean, it's bad, but they're backed by the same thing, by the same markets, which is, um, which is, the, which is their own. You know, Bitcoin, uh, there's only a certain amount. There are there are limitations by the way it's designed. And you don't have a government that can just print money and lower the value like you have with um, how our, our, our financial system works now. You don't have a Fed, which is a whole nother um, ball game. Greg Wilson says in the Facebook chat, if you have net, neutral, net neutrality, government has the ability to get involved much easier. Yes. And he is very right about that. That that is an extremely good point. Very upper level, complex thinking kind of point. Because if you know anything about how bitcoins works, it's all um, technology. It's not cash and coins and things like that. It's all it's all based on the blockchain. Which I'll probably have. I've had a couple of experts on. Uh, if you go to um, Spreaker or go to YouTube and look up any of my shows, you'll there are uh, shows with a couple of experts that talk about. Uh, the blockchain and how it relates to Bitcoin talks about cryptocurrency in general and, and specifically um, Bitcoins. So definitely check that out. But I haven't had anybody talk about cryptocurrency in about a month. So maybe I will bring somebody back on since it's starting to get in the news. The two inter fun fact about Bitcoins too is that um, the two brothers that Mark Zuckerberg stole Facebook from, and now I'm probably going to have to like hurry up and da download my my video now i just said that but it's true the two <laughs> the two guys um that he stole facebook the idea the concept of facebook from can't remember their names right now but they just one of the things that they did with their earnings was bought a bunch of bitcoins and now they're billionaires so there's that so <laughs> just i'm just saying a couple of twin um brothers that that happened to i want to say winklesburg or Something like that is their names. I can't, I can't remember their names, but they're doing well. Um, one more thing I want to tell you about before I go. I'm trying to I always have like a bunch of stories I want to tell you guys about. And I never know which ones to pick. What's the most important? Um, okay, I'll talk about this one. I don't know if anyone's ever heard of WeWork. I'm sure you've heard of Winklevoss. Thank you, Monique Lovelace. Winklevoss um, is the name of the two twin brothers. Uh, if you've ever heard of uh, Meetup, which is uh, a website, I don't know if it's still popular or not, I, th I think so, uh, where you can meet up according to things that you're interested in and things like, and you meet these, meet with these strangers based on common interests. interests. Um, well, there's another organization called WeWork where you can um, rent office, office space, and I'm, I'm not, I am not going to do a great job telling you about what we work does because they also have we we live as well but um i actually uh was was considering during doing that in dc a friend of mine uh took me over to get a tour uh of the we work facilities in dc it reminds you of the very contemporary millennial type situation where you can rent um office space but it's not like an office building and there's a lot of amenities and things that come with it uh, but look it up. But anyway, WeWork is going to buy me up. And if you do any research on WeWork, you will understand why that would actually be a really awesome thing. So if you've ever heard of WeWork or you've ever heard of Meetup, keep an eye on um, that merger 
that that's going to be really cool. Um, okay, what, one more thing. <laughs> I'm going to report on one one more thing. Walmart's all, uh, online pricing is catching up with Amazon's, according to Reuters. Now that is um, important. If you're a bit, as big a fan of, of Amazon as I am, which I'm a huge a huge fan. Yeah, Greg Wilson, Meetup was great, and I think people still do meetups, but you just don't hear. I don't know. Maybe something's up with their promo department. Like you don't even see them advertising on Facebook. I didn't even know Meetup was still around. Truth be told. Um, but Walmart's starting to really be able to compete with prices on Amazon. So that's something to keep your eye on. I'm not a huge, I'm not a huge Walmart fan because of you know people. <laughs> is, that, is that horrible to say? <laughs> it's true. Um, but I love Amazon because you know no no people. So <laughs> you can just stay, you can stay in your little hole and order as much as you want. You can just tell Alexa to order it for you. It's a beautiful thing. But but uh, Walmart's starting to really be able to compete with that price point, and that, that's something important to look at. They are two huge giants that are in constant competition with each other. So from a business perspective, and quite frankly, from a consumer uh, perspective, that's something that you want to keep looking at. And it is 5.57 already, which means I have to close the show. I want to thank my guests so very much marty smedberg for coming on she was just fantastic i hope that you all were uh all able to to glean something valuable out of her visit i certainly did and if you came in late please do catch the uh podcast don't forget to follow me uh on uh twitter at money talk mel or at, at njgop diva if you really uh want to talk politics or or whatever um or on my facebook page at money talk Mel, I would absolutely love to have you. And remember, all of this is very important because after all, it is your money. Have a great night.